Okay, this is real cinematography stuff, guys. Just watch it. Now, Joel, in the first panel... Oh, okay. Joel is currently... <laughs> this here is a uh, box with, in the front there, there's actually a lens, if I can focus. Hold, no, hold back. Okay, that's our pinhole lens. And through there, inside the box, about five centimeters down, around about here... We have an image. We have a uh, linear photo diode array, which actually is capturing light in this pattern, in, in a straight line along here. Probably as big as my fingernail there, though. And so what happens is we're actually picking up the different angles from here to here, across to that laser just there, which is not in focus, which is actually attached. By a sticky tape. <laughs> by a sticky oh, tape. Sorry, babe. Onto the side of this device, which is still not focusing. Okay, so, but then we actually watch the response on this screen here. And as you can see, this here is actually two cycles of the waveform. So let's move this back here so you can actually see how it duplicates. And now, Joel's actually probably standing about 1.5 metres back currently from the wall. 1.3. To about there, and that's the a, that's a light. So if, Joel, if you come closer to the screen, uh, closer to the wall. Sure. That's about 80 centimetres. That's about 40 centimetres. And that's about... Peak in there, that's it. That's, as that's about 20 centimetres. That's as close as we'll get. Well done. That looks good. Excellent. So what... Tell me what... Uh, what infrared sensor... What, sorry, what laser we're using? What, um, what, we're, we're what using, frequency is it? We're using a 1 watt... Uh, 650 nanometers. Nan nanometer laser. Okay. One milliwatt. Sorry. One milliwatt. If I one had... milliwatt. Okay. Cool. Yeah. If it was a if it was a one watt, I'd but... be burning a hole in the wall. Yes, it's very true. Okay. Um. Now we've hooked this up, right here. Okay. Yep. We've got a three volt. Um. We've got a three volt regulation it. there. Oh, over here. Yep. Yep. We've got a HC12 here from from a kit from Swinburne. And basically, we had the chip plugged in here, which we've run through a cable, which is just a bit of Cat5 cable, all the way to the device, uh, with additional power for the laser. And as you can see, it works a fucking treat. There we go. What else would you like to say, Joel? Tell me about how wrapped you are. I... I initially thought this isn't gonna fuck it, isn't gonna work. <laughs> Not gonna work at all. But after seeing this, I must say I am thoroughly chuffed. Well done. I'm really thoroughly chuffed. So would you say that this is six months worth of work? No. <laughs> <laughs> would you say that everyone should be impressed with you? I reckon this is this is I reckon that doing this is quite impressive. Um, I mean it it, it shows that. It shows that, you know, the theory meets the um, thing. Obviously, would like it to be a bit more responsive than what it is, but hey, it works. Um, there's no reason why we can't bump up the resolution a bit. So what, so what frequency are you running at right now? Click it. Uh, we've got it running at five, just over five hertz. So five, five counts per second. Um, yep, so what can we pump that up to? And will it actually... Will it actually change the response on the... Um... It does change the response. The faster you go, the less likely it is to pick up the laser. Okay. <clears throat> so we could make it a variable? We could make it variable, yes. So that if it's not picking up something in close range, it slows down? Oh, you could do that if you like, yeah. So it's a dynamic frequency? You could, dynam you could use a dynamic frequency if you want. So if it wasn't more, picking up the, anything the, up the close? Slow, the slower it is the more likely it will be to pick up the laser. Mm -hmm. The faster it is, the less likely it will pick up. Okay. It will look like a small blip. Um, and it takes a fair bit to get saturation out of it as well. So are you saying that there's actually hidden saturation? Yes, that's hidden saturation. What's that at? That's hitting 2.9 to 3.04. That's, that's half a metre. And so it's skiing saturation a half metre, which means we could actually uh, increase the frequency there? About, about a foot, sorry. Uh, you, could, you, could, you could increase the frequency frequency there to bring bring the saturation down to yep. make it more accurate. Okay. Cool. Uh, what else do we <clears throat>
Uh, the, the hole we've drilled here is a 0.7 millimeter hole. 0.7 was it? 0.7. We went with 0.5. Didn't 5, work 5, too well, yeah. so we went up to 0.7 just to give it that bit of extra extra of a gap. Do you think we could have gone smaller, or do you think that's actually well? The the the, the narrow beam on the 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 crow is actually probably fine, isn't it? Sufficient for what we want. Yeah, for what we want, it's it's pretty good. But, um, but as you can see there, the closer I get, I mean, how how fat is that beam? So I mean, we could we could probably make that a bit more narrow, mind you. If, you, if we're looking at where it's just peaking, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you want to tell about it, Ron, how you had a wet dream about it? No. Okay, don't tell anyone. No. So. Leah, would you like to disclose how Joel had a wet dream over it? <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> it's on your pillow, love. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe sleep in the wet spot. <laughs> <laughs> and this is the uh, first LPDA. I don't know if you can see it there. That's the first LPDA we had. Uh, What's so special about that one, Joel? I blew it up. <laughs> I, I, let, I let the smoke out. So Joel let the smoke out. And what happens once the smoke is let out? Can you put it back in? No, you send it back and get a refund. <laughs> <laughs> what about the burn mark on it? It's got skiddies. Yeah, it's got skiddies. <laughs> yeah, there's, unfortunately, there's not much you can do with that apart from turning it into an ornament. Uh, Autumn minute it is then. Yeah. Okay, well, um. Turn it into your wedding ring. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, anything else you'd like to add? Um. How did you do? The way we've got it set up at the moment is very rough. Um, it's extremely rough. Because keep, keep my. I've got a laser <clears> taped <throat> to the side of a box, right? So. You, we theoretically we wanted the laser over a little bit further. Probably another two centimeters, across, another twenty mil, yeah. Yeah, probably another twenty mil, mil, and that'll give us a bit further length. Yeah, yeah. I think it was the further over it was, the more length the gave us. Yeah. But the further it is, the slower it has to go because it's got to compensate because it's trying to pick up, it's trying to pick up the that point mm -hmm. such, from such a far distance, and as you can see down there. Uh, the further away it is, the less response you're going to get. Yep. But keep in mind, because uh, it's because it's hitting the side of the LCD, it's going through here and hitting just on the edge of the LPDA, which mm -hmm. is just sitting just about here. Now, if it's sitting on the edge, um, you're also you'll also have a bit of a cut in the thing because it's not drilled perfectly mm -hmm. it hasn't been correctly beveled um so if you do that it will may sharpen the outer range up a bit as well true true just a quick question um have you got a memory card in that certainly do That's no all right then. no it's the same recording on nothing on here i just thought i'd check because after all that anything else you'd like to add joel no you got anything to say i need to go to the toilet <laughs> there you go. Hey, read my we'll magazine. Con we'll conclude this with uh, James taking a dump. <laughs> bye bye. Bye bye. <laughs>